Well, in the early days of the Critic Show, <laughs> okay, that sounds like we've been around forever, and really we've only been around a year, but still, in the early days of the Critic Show, back when I wasn't even sure how possible it was to be able to have regular celebrity guests on this show, I reached out to Julie Newmar's publicist requesting an interview with her, and he almost immediately responded back. And as always, I was very grateful to him for that, and it was quite exciting anticipating a conversation with the first Catwoman I ever got to know. To me, she is still the best one of all. And I have no doubt that Julie was pleased with Anne Hathaway's portrayal of the sexy, iconic villain. And when we talked last summer, we discussed the past, present, and future of Catwoman. And we talked about her life now as a writer and a consistently sexy lady who continues to connect with fans of all generations. Here is our conversation. Julie Newmar, thank you so much for being on The Critic Show. Oh, aren't I happy to be here. Thank you very much, Scott. It's my pleasure. You were just recently at the uh, San Diego Comic-Con with Adam West and Burt Ward, and how was that experience? Extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. I don't know what the audiences are drinking or thinking. They are so alive. It, it was the most stimulating experience that I've ever had in this kind of show. Because there are thousands of people that show up for comic books and the art that they make and the graphics and the films and uh, Steven Spielberg was there. Everyone was there. Did they have anything like this when the Batman show was on TV? Anywhere where fans could gather and meet you? Any special appearances? Not really. It's definitely a big deal now where people can come and meet people like yourself. And uh, I would assume being at a convention where 150,000 people gather and so many there were coming to see you and Adam and Bert over 40 years later, that really has to be rewarding, overwhelming, and kind of pleasantly surprising all at once, I would think. Oh, uh, it's a sweetheart experience. I had a pair of ears made, and I had them made out of lace this time. And you, you just try to keep up with the, the, the flavor that's happening and keep fresh on everything. But thanks to Hub Network, do you know Hub Network? It's a new network about year and a half old. Mm -hmm. They're now re-showing this series, the Batman series, Monday through Thursday, and it goes on at 8.30 evening. And it's a wonderful network because it's family-oriented, and we know what that means. Right. Texas, we know what that means. Mm. <laughs> Not all four-letter words. Right. Well, it's good to know that more and more generations of people can see that show. Now, you found out about the Catwoman role when you moved to New York, and you didn't know much about Batman, and you actually found out about the role through your brother, is that right? Who was going to Harvard. Mm. My brilliant brother who said, listen, you've got to do this show because we quit our studies and we go and watch the show, 3.30 to, to 4, Wednesday and Thursday. And, you know, I've heard that from fathers and grandfathers now, and people tell me this wonderful story of how much the kids get to play in the costumes. and It just all worked. It, it was a, a fantasy come true. I bet so. And you made your own costume. Was that something they asked you to do? No, not exactly, because it, it, it originated in the comic strip. Right. And But I did a version of the Catwoman costume, particularly the gold belt, which oh, they put around my waist, but I thought it made my waist look thick. So I moved it down to my hips. And being elastic, it, it moved down. But doing that, it gave me a more voluptuous uh, body line. And now I notice all the dolls are doing the same thing. So it worked. And also, the costume now is in the uh, Smithsonian Museum in Washington. Wow. Well, you are a trendsetter then. If all the dolls are doing it, that essentially means that was the best way to put that costume together. In a way, yes. It was a wonderful time in, the, in, in 1966, 67, when the show was made. There was a... I don't know, the country was feeling good about itself, and I think there was more fun to be had. Oh, I wish it was like it was then. It was a trendsetter, though. Yeah. It was also a time when color came in right around then, and colors just really vibrated off the screen, so it had to have a punch, in other words. During the fight scenes, you had those big colorful words coming at you, like Zowie and Bam and Zonk. Another thing taken from the comic strip, just lifted right off, put on the screen. Yeah, it was brilliant. And it worked. It takes a bold producer. You have to have all the elements right. Casting, great producing, 
of good music, and on top of everything, probably the most important thing is wonderful writing. Absolutely. You said you didn't have a lot of familiarity with uh, Batman and Catwoman, so once you got the role, what was your mindset as far as bringing Catwoman to life on the show? It was how fast I could learn the lines. <laughs> because they give you the script the night before, some of the time, right there on the set, say, oh, we're going to change this entire scene here, learn this right now, while you're having a coffee break. Mm -hmm. and just get in costume and go do it. But television has that kind of excitement. On this show, they would shoot the rehearsal. Oh, really? Sure, they wanted to save money. Well, and, you know, in a way, that's kind of brilliant because I think there have been a lot of actors and directors that have been on set and they run through a quick run through a rehearsal and it works perfectly and then you spend the rest of the show hoping that everything went as well as the rehearsal did. So, in a way, recording the rehearsal is probably a good idea on more than one front. Oh, some of the best shows in television have been done that way. Carol Burnett, but it takes that huge spontaneity and audiences love it and they just feed you their energy and they go with you and you, you just it's like a romper room or a play room it's like being kids again <laughs> there went a long time before they attempted to do anything more with batman and then came this slew of films ranging from uh, obviously, they made a, a film with Adam and Burt, but also years later, they, of course, did uh, Michael Keaton and Val Kilmer and George Clooney and Christian Bale. We've also had a couple of different incarnations of Catwoman and a new one coming in the next year. Have you seen any of the new Batman productions in recent years, and what did you think of them? Yes, I've seen most of them, and hooray for Catwoman. That role will be played on and on, and everyone who does it brings something to it that is it newness and, ex and excitement. It, it's a plum female role. Yeah. And you just know that around Halloween when so many little girls put on the costume and, and you just feel special. Well, I think one of the things that's great about the Catwoman role, all the other bad guys are literally out to destroy Batman and that's where it begins and ends. There is something more to the relationship between Batman and Catwoman. It's almost like she kind of likes him and you can't figure out if that's part of the trap or if there's something really going on there. Well, come on. It's pretty simple, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I mean, all the other villains were male. That's right. So where are you going to really get the sparks when you come into the close-up? It was a great show, and it's, it's good to know so many people are still interested in what you did and what Adam and Bert did as well. I've actually got a uh, couple of questions here from a listener of the show who is a fan of yours. This is from Sean in Louisiana. And Sean wanted to know two things. One, do you own any cats? And number two, have you ever had someone at a convention ask you to personalize their autograph to Wang Fu? Oh, the last question is hundreds, maybe a thousand. Really? <laughs> to Wang Fu, of course. And I love doing that. And I hope to meet you, Sean, at a convention. Nobody's ever invited me to Louisiana. Well, what's up with that? Come down there and have some of your good food. And now what was the first part of the question? Do you own any cats? Sean, as a matter of fact, when I first played that role, and then they did a second show of it, it there were six shows and all, I thought I'd better learn about cats. So I adopted two cats when I lived in New York, and I just watched them, watched how they behaved, you know, what they were like, what kind of sounds they'd make when, when they were pleased, displeased. And I own cats, but I don't have any now. I have a, actually a comment from Rita in Pennsylvania. She said, I don't have a question, but I wanted to let you know, Julie, that I think you are amazing. <laughs> so not a question. <laughs> if I met you, I think you are amazing, and I thank you. Thank you for that. All right. Well, let's talk about your book for a moment. First off, this is a great title, and I assume you use Catwoman in the title so people know it's you. It makes it that much more familiar. Yeah. But have, have you seen what the, the cover? I have. What do you think? I think it's great. I think it stands out, and it's really, you really... Do you the whiskers? I do like the whiskers. <laughs> well, the title of the book is The Conscious Catwoman Explains Life on Earth. Right. So, the book just came out last week. I'm enormously pleased with the way it turned out. Mm -hmm. And there are 70 photographs inside. The photographs are great. Many of them are my, are my absolute favorite. It's really the kind of book that you, you want to keep or you want to give to your 11-year-old your daughter, or you, you want to share with someone 
You know what it is? It's a how-to book. People would walk up to me on the street and say, oh, you know, how do you stay slim, tall, and <laughs> this and that? And it isn't just a book about my figure, please. So it's boring. <laughs> it's a book about how to make life work when you're in the dumps and just, just like a turtle that turned on its back. How do you get right side up again? So it's, it's little thoughts and one-liners, helpful hints on how to make yourself rich again. I noticed that it definitely covers a lot of ground, and like you say, with really simple one-liners. And I think that's great, because that means you literally can open any page and get something from it. Exactly. I would assume that, that this book is meant for everyone. There's not necessarily one group of people that benefits more than the other. What do you want most people to come away with after they read it? Um, that their life gets better and they notice it, and every day gets a little better and a little better, and that's how you build a house. You put in one brick at a time. That's how you make a fortune. You, you, you put those dollars in, you know, and you just stick with it. And how to stay out of depression. I mean, that's really important. Sure. How to, how to stay focused. I remember when I was around 10 or 11 years old, I read a book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yes. And it left an impact on me for the rest of my life. And I still have that book on my bookshelf. No, I probably bought another six or seven just because I wore it out because it made so much sense. I felt as if the author really cared about me and what my questions were. The real answers are waiting to be heard by you yourself. If we just get in the way of that, we resist it. We, we try to live up to other people's dreams. But the only dream that will work for you is the one that's inside your mind, your consciousness, and your quiet space. Well, I noticed that in the book that uh, you point out that you're a model in your 60s, a writer in your 70s. So are you ready to proclaim on the critic show what you're going to do in your 80s? Because I noticed that another part of your book is you say that there's plenty more to do. Yes. You know what? The, the real answer is, and I, ha I haven't a clue what I'm going to do in my 80s, but if you really are in tune with where you are right now and, and accepting yourself as you are, when you get there, it'll all come clear to you bit by bit by bit. You won't be overwhelmed at all. It's really each step at a time. Very you true. You don't take a thousand steps at a time. You take each step. Well, I think this book will be a great read for a lot of people that are fans of yours and also can learn a little bit about how you've accomplished so much. So how can people get your book? Well, you can go to my website, julienewmar.com, backslash book. Okay. You can order it online. It's so new that it hasn't come out on Amazon yet. That'll take about six more weeks. But you also have another website where people can read more of your blogs and writings, correct? Yes. As a matter of fact, I actually am working on four books. Oh, wow. Just four? <laughs> <laughs> At julienewmarwrites.com. Up in the right-hand corner in red ink, there's a, a little questionnaire to people who'd like to, well, I can make them famous if they do this, if they would like to contribute a story about who was their first, I don't like this word turn on, but um, who is the first person that lit your fire? Okay. And you know how this happened. This all happened be because of my portrayal of Catwoman yep. and Batman. And after it came out, men would walk up to me on the street and they would say to me rather sheepishly, Miss Newmar, did you know that you were my first turn on? Mm -hmm. And that kind of set me aback and I, I didn't know how to respond to that for quite <laughs> some time. But then I got the guts to say to them, okay, well, how old were you? Yeah. <laughs> and the answer almost floored. Yeah. <laughs> you know what they said? Um, I was... Four? Yeah. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Can you believe that? I remember watching an interview with you at one point in time at a convention on YouTube, and he mentions when he was a little kid that he didn't really, quote-unquote, like girls. But then when he watched Batman and saw Catwoman, he was like, oh, that's what they grow up to be. Okay, I do like girls. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be fun. But you got to trust those boys. I mean, their instincts are right, you see. And here's the, the fun part, here's the interesting part, that when I get these stories, and some of them are so beautiful, 
Well, I just want to remind everybody that Julie just mentioned that if you go to julienumarwrites.com, you can submit your story about the very first one to light your fire. She will give you credit and be part of her next book. You can also go to that website and read some more of Julie's blogs and other things that she's sharing with her public. And we appreciate her sharing time with us today on the program. You can find out everything that Julie's been involved in on her website, julienumar.com. Julie, it's been an honor and a privilege to talk to you. You're always going to be the original and best Catwoman in my eyes, and it was a thrill to have you on the show today. Oh, aren't I the lucky one, Scott? I really am. Thank you so much for being able to respond to people who've written in to you and um, have continued great success with this podcast. <laughs> oh, I know. It's a, it's a growing thing. Isn't the world exciting the way it's evolving? And it's evolving so fast. we got to keep up with it somehow. Yes, we do. Well, I'm glad you stopped keeping up well with it for a few minutes to talk to me. And uh, all the best to you and all the best in the book. And hope to talk to you again soon sometime. Wonderful. All right. Take care. Bye.